Well, good morning, guys. Today I'm going to do a little video showing how I'm working up the paddle wheel speed sensor on my boat. Now, these paddle wheel sensors measure the boat's velocity in the water with a little paddle wheel right here, this little thing, and, and they stick down in the water and measure the velocity. Now, what I've noticed is that in my boat over the last six months, the paddle wheel sensor has intermittently given me a zero reading, even though I'm moving well through the water. Um, the commonest cause of that, of course, is you get kelp or debris or little insects or um, debris that clogs up this or, and causes it to bind. And uh, when it first started happening last year, I noticed that I could clean it and it seemed to be better. But more recently, um, cleaning doesn't seem to be helping much and the last time I had a look at it, it was working just fine. And so I've taken the sensor out of the boat and I'm going to bench test it now to see if it's bad. All right, now let me show you how this works normally. Um, if you watch what, while I slowly move this paddle wheel, you can see that the voltage changes on the signal lead. So here's the voltage, we're at zero, and I'm going to turn the paddle wheel 90 degrees. And you see my voltage jumps up to 4.2 volts, and then back down to zero volts. And every time I make a 90 degree change, I get that change. You see that? Now let's put it on the oscilloscope and show the same thing. So here we are on the oscilloscope and it's reading four and a half volts now and zero volts now. And if I move it slowly, this is what happens. It jumps up and down. And then if I spin it, I get this. So I'm just flicking it with my finger. And you can see the action seems to be pretty, pretty reproducible. So on the bench, we've shown that the sensor is working fine. Let's put the sensor back in the boat and see if those signals are getting to the computer. In this next clip, I've got the sensor hooked up to the computer electrically, but the paddle wheel end is not in the water. That way I can move the paddle wheel manually and see if the computer is getting a signal. All right, here's my computer. Um, the wires come in here, so I'm going to undo this screw and this screw. All right, I may not be able to focus uh, well enough for you here to be able to see this well, but number 35 is the signal wire for the temp sensor, and then 34 is power, 33 is ground, and then 31 is the signal wire for the paddle wheel sensor. I brought you back to the computer to show uh, one more thing that, that um, may help um, in terms of your repair. Um, whenever you're evaluating a sensor, one of the most basic questions is the question as to which wire is the signal wire. And that can be a bit of a tricky issue. Now, of course, the best approach is to look it up in the manual if you have that available. But with so many versions available and with so many uh, years that have transpired between when it was first sold and when it wasn't, don't be surprised if you have trouble finding the deta details that you need to know. Now, um, in the absence of a manual, the best approach is to put a multimeter on the device and see what you get. Now, to do this, you have to have the device turned on. So the sensor and the uh, boat computer is turned on. You don't have to have the uh, motor running in the boat, but you need to have the, the electronics booted up. And what you do is you um, put your multimeter onto, lead onto this. This is the, the ground bar. And on a boat, um, as opposed to a car where you're grounded to the chassis, on a boat everything um, comes back on wires to the original computer so that there's less uh, issues with interference. And so um, this ground bar is a nice ground. Um, you put your multimeter on each of the uh, wires uh, leading from the device and see what you get. Now the highest reading should be somewhere in the range of 5 volts if it's a typical sensor and that's the generally the power. And then um, you compare um, the multimeter readings on the ground to the multimeter readings of each individual one and see if you can identify which is the ground. Um, as it turns out in this particular model the um, ground wire and the power wire are wrapped together and isolated, and so it was fairly easy to identify which was ground and which was power. From there you need to find uh, which is the sensor. And of course, if the sensor is not working, that may be particularly problematic. But um, on the bench I showed that the green wire is my sensor wire. All right, I've got it set up on the signal wire and ground. And I'm just gonna see as the signal moves as the paddle wheel moves. I've got the three wires hooked up to the paddle wheel sensor, the, the voltage ground and the signal wire. The other wires are left disconnected. And we're gonna just see if this uh, voltage dances around like it should. Right now I'm holding the sensor in my hand and moving the paddle wheel 90 degrees and then stopping for a few seconds and then moving 90 degrees and then stopping and so on. You can see the voltage is bouncing appropriately between four and zero volts, just as it did on the bench. This shows that my paddle wheel is correctly hooked up and there's no short to ground, and the minimal voltage drop suggests that my connections are okay as well. 
I don't know about you guys, but I never seem to have time to watch a long YouTube video, so we're going to split this project into two parts and stop here. You may have noticed that we didn't really have to take the sensor off the boat to do this test, since we found out what we needed to know with the last test. I took it off mainly because my problem was intermittent and I wanted to test it repeatedly and more formally on the bench. Here's a link to part two.